Oh, that's what that's the Google Doc. Okay. Yeah. This is just what The other Google table. Now these are all the handouts. That's the bow tie? Yeah. Do you know what Juneteenth is? Also, the Juneteenth stuff? 16th or 17th. So I'm saying, do you know when they're having it over there at all? Uh, I think I saw something 16th or 17th. Like Where do you find it at? Where did you find it? I, it was in some email that came my way. Did you send it to me? Uh, <laughs> if I can find it. Uh, I'll, I'll look on location 19 and see if I can find yeah. it. Yeah. And I'll look on um, Rochester. On, does anybody know about Juneteenth when they're going to have it over there on, Mark, on Madison? I did see an announcement about that. I haven't seen someone How do you find it? How do you get the announcement? I'm sorry for bothering. It's on somebody's mail list. Let me write myself a note and maybe I can. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I was only asking about it because it's coming up. Yeah, it is. And I didn't know if it was this weekend or next weekend because people want to know when it is. It's on Saturday. This Saturday? Yeah, I don't know where. It's probably on Madison then. Yeah, probably. It's in the show. Okay. All right, so let's all take a look at the minutes. We'll spend a few minutes high uh, looking at the minutes. If you have any comments about those, we'll get, get those. Yeah, tour of every possible. Place. I know. I was like, I don't know where this room is. They're moving this part of the building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm glad y'all put time. the signs the way I did. I figured it out. I went the wrong way. I turned back and then seen the sign on the other part, so that's how I found it. Yeah, I went you. the wrong way too. Mm -hmm. uh, I need some mess to the calendar. Anyone extra copies in there? Ah, there we go. I can give you right down that line. Thank you so much. Because he's in the room. All right. Mm -hmm. Do we have any comments about the minutes? I got to be brought up to speed on what's going on. I'm sorry. Okay. Doesn't say who's going to contact the Warner School. Is that you or? Yeah, I mean, Ralph put it out there. Yeah. Um, I have some folks I can talk to, unless other people know. I don't have any contacts. Yeah. I want to ask one more question and I'm going to say nothing else. Are we meeting the whole summer? Uh, we hope to not be meeting the whole summer. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, I'm just asking. And we actually want to, we talked about this last time, we want to wrap this up fairly soon so we can hand it to the new superintendent. Oh, okay. Do we so, know who that is yet? They still haven't made a decision? Nope. Hmm. Nope. Yes. You're not trying, you're not trying for the job? You ladies are trying for the job? <laughs> <laughs> negotiations, negotiations. Mm. So I'll take that as a no comment. No I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, well I'll just summarize what um, where we are here. We've um, combined the three groups' proposals, okay. and then we put them online on a, in a Google Doc. And we've invited everyone to edit or add comments as they'd like. And uh, we're also taking a look at all the data that we've been asking for. We put that online as well. And if you see this table right here, this is a list of all the data that we've asked for. And people have started to ask questions. What I'd like to propose is we take a look at this table today and see what we think about the questions, add some or answer some, and then maybe we can invite um, a data person next week to come and answer some of these questions. In the meantime, we'll continue editing the documents online. And, um, Oh, yes. Um, Paul, who could not make it today, you see this letter here. We passed a copy of this around. He wasn't able to be here, but he wanted 
us to discuss his proposal. So maybe we can spend some time discussing his proposal and discussing the table of data today. Okay. Why don't we start with Paul's letter? Okay, take a look at that and then we can get a conversation started about that. With the Manuscript Task Force? With Dear fellow task force committee members, yeah. Mm -hmm. This one. What? This one here? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, the, the print's so small, I'm work, working on glasses. Do you want me to read it out loud? I could, oh, I could read it. Brief I, got it. Okay. I got it. Okay. No, I'm just saying the print was small at first. I know, I, I didn't I bring got my reading now. glasses either, but <laughs> The key is if you can get 100% lottery participation, you don't have that perpetuation of the undesirable school because you still want, you know, you're not going to be pushing children into empty seats. Um, yeah. So I would like to know how much of a problem this is because the, that, and that was. Still, one of the questions, of questions on here, right. so <laughs> that was one of the questions on the chart. So I, I actually feel like I don't know how much right. of a problem this is currently. So that's a good question to add to our data. Right. But it, I mean, it's very the the progression of questions is very logical if you make certain assumptions first. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of impressed from the, with the uh, the vantage point. But you're right, Andy. The way that the data came to us on the mm -hmm. first pass, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Is it a rumor that they're going to close school, close down school 44? Parents have been getting upset with me and asking me. I said, when I come to the next meeting, I'll ask. 44 is the one on uh, uh, Charlie. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's on the, the list. It is on the list, but the negotiated outcome was that it would stay open until school 16 is reopened after the full so Why would they close that school down? There's kids that can get there in two minutes. Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. Academics was a big aspect, the fact that the, kid, that the school was failing the kids that are there. Okay. You know, it's one thing for a school to be convenient, but does, do folks really want their kids to go to the lowest performing school in the district? I didn't know that, because that was a good school. Well, that's just it. People well, knew it, that it's come out of level. receivership, and it's doing reasonably well. That, well, that's true, yeah. John. And we, I mean, and took, we went on the tour and everything, but the, you know, that was the reason for the decision making. Yeah. So. At the time, they had they had shoehorned seven and eight in there, oh. and seventh eighth grade. Seventh mm -hmm. eighth grade, which complicates things a bit, and it's gone mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Then it got closed. Then they took seven and eight out, and it bounced back up. I only say that because when thirty seven school closed now, my son went there, and I couldn't say anything because you know you can't really, yeah. and that's why I'm here now. Well, this is you know this how this comes out will impact what future decisions are. So. That's a discussion mm -hmm. for another day, I think. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's keep focusing back on Paul's um, suggestions here, make sure everybody's had a chance to read it. Um, yeah, that's the pile of stuff. There's a, the minutes, the data chart, uh, the Google I mean, Doc, and Paul's proposal. This basically says there's no choice except for citywide schools. And I don't think that's a good idea. It's not that part of it, I don't think it's fair either. Can you say more about that? Well, this basically this says there's lottery for citywide schools, and then everyone goes to their neighborhood school unless, and you can only move if there's room in some other neighborhood school. Now, there's not going to be room in other neighborhood schools unless, you know, there's something wrong with the way the boundaries were drawn in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. So assuming the draw boundaries are drawn proportional to the population for each school, then there's not going to be space anywhere, and there's no choice at all. 
-hmm. Here's the thing. Folks have an aversion, folks have an aversion to the lottery because they want certainty. But certainty does not provide equity. It means that, you know, folks who live in better neighborhoods or better schools win. And the concept of lottery, as abhorrent as it is to most of us, and this is the big thing that I flipped on. I used to be, when I, when I ran the first time, for my very first term, I ran on the concept of neighborhood schools. Um, but, lot, and I said, what are we teaching kids with lottery except that it's better to be lucky than to be smart or better to be lucky than to be to plan ahead or whatever. But the lottery spreads the risk so that everyone experiences the same risk of finding themselves in a low-performing school or well, achieving the high-performing school. That's, but I mean, actually, that's not exactly the way it works now because, no, no, no. I mean, it's not no. just completely random lottery. There is a geographic preference and so what I tried to do in my proposal was there's a stronger geographic preference because everybody lives in the designated zone for some school. So, uh, however, uh, there's a 60% rule. So it's so like up to 60% uh, of the seats are reserved for those kids. Now, I think that in, in, unless something radically changes that I can't really <coughs> imagine, no school is going to hit that 60%, which means people would have certainty. People would be able, would effectively be guaranteed to go to their neighborhood school. And, um, you know, I think for me the 60% was kind of just suppose maybe 20 years from now everybody in the school area starts sending their kids to school and again, like, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but if it did, there would be something on the books that would uh, protect diversity and keep uh, some kind of equity. Um, one of the questions here, on the data, Question just right off that. Yeah, sure. So, how would you market that? How is that? Um, because I think if you're looking at what we're current, I, the reason I'm here is because what we're doing isn't working. That's why I'm here. That's why I joined this committee. This is why a policy change, some kind of recommendation. What we're doing isn't working. Okay. So, my question to you then is if you're saying 60%, we're likely to not hit that. We're still going to market so, it as a neighborhood school. So what? how do you market this to change it? Because the way it is, it's not working. Uh, so what we tell parents is last year, everybody got their neighborhood school. Okay. So we're saying that we're no, it's we're not, not a promising. Okay. But last year, 100% of parents got it. Okay. And not only that, but every parent who applied for their neighborhood school since the Choice Program started got their neighborhood school. Because sometimes what we tell parents is not reaching all parents. So we say we can tell parents, but it's not reaching all parents. And so if unless there is a policy change, we're not going to do anything but the same. And we're the lowest performing district in the state. We have a shrinking population of students in our district. So that's why I'm looking for some kind of, we have to change the way we are doing things now. And I just don't know if you're, there's so many great things about your proposal, but I don't think we're doing anything that's really any different than what we're doing. What do you think are the best and the worst things? About what we're currently doing? Yeah. Or about the policy? The well, you can speak to both. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that without the certainty of knowing, I mean, I think that by saying you get, you automatically get, you know, you're assigned your neighborhood school, and then there is room, and the closest, your default is your the closest school into your, where you are ge geographically, right? So if it's, if you don't get into school 12, then the next closest school is school 35. You know, like that's, but people understand that. It just seems like the uncertainty is what is driving people out. Because 
overall, we have so many low performing schools, people don't want to take that risk from what I hear parents saying. And, and we could say we would tell parents, you, oh, this many people went to their neighborhood school, but that doesn't reach all of our parents. There's so many parents that don't understand the system and the placement, and we have to speak to those those voices to those well, parents. I, I don't, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, yeah, we have to market it. I think that's very important, but I don't really see a big difference between, I mean, I actually don't, um, I don't think it's better to say you have to go to your neighborhood school than you have a 100% chance of going to your neighborhood school if you want that. Mm -hmm. Right. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, I'm trying not to get off of the topic, but a lot of what the problem is, is what's being taught at the schools. When Michael went to 37, he had to work harder, and he did a lot of stuff. But at 29, which they consider like an easy school, Shara did stuff that was basic. And when Corey went to two school, his stuff was so easy. I think like what the parents are, are concerned about, some of the schools like... When, when my sister went to school, she learned certain things, and I kept looking at her work because I was going to a school because I was in special ed. And when children are taught certain things and the parents are not teaching them at home, like my kids, I they learned at school, but I did stuff. I turned that television off. Mm -hmm. I went to the library and got books that you could do at, mm -hmm. at the home so that the kids would do good and it wouldn't be so low, but everybody doesn't have that mindset. And a lot of kids, if, 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 if Mark is learning Thai at 16 school, but she's only learning basic English, she's going to only go to Mark's school. That's what I think is another problem, too, are what they're learning. Are they learning languages? Are they learning things that make them want to go to school and want them at the certain schools? Because if you live at 19, you're only going to learn what we want you to learn. You live near number one school, we only want you to learn what you want to learn. That's another problem in itself, too, because if the kids yeah, are not... One, one of the things we've got, too, that I think we've, we've got to try to address with whatever we come up here is making sure that we uh, provide enough certainty in the schools so that the teachers really take root in that neighborhood. You know, we've, we've got schools. I mean, what we've been doing with schools is oh gee they're doing bad let's close it down and shuffle the whole deck and create more uncertainty and instead of really trying to make sure that teachers are encouraged to take courses if they need it are uh, have enough interaction with, a, with some oversight so that they're doing well make sure they have the uh, ethnic sensitivity so that they they know how to work well with all the kids they have in their classes I mean, that's the thing that eventually makes everybody want to go to the neighborhood school if, if that school's doing that. And, you know, for, for the last three years since School 44 has been on the chopping block, it's been one of the things that you find is difficult. Teachers have all this uncertainty, and that impacts, you know, how they work. They may work hard to try to, to get the school out of receivership, but you know, it impacts whether, do they want to look at another school next week and, you know, does it take away from the resources you got there? Well, I don't think that placement is, I mean, we have no idea, we don't even have a director of placement right now, right? I mean, who knows what is going on in placement? These are decisions that are affecting people, families' lives right now. We, to me, placement has just been a mess. So if placement is committed to looking at 60% of a neighborhood and saying, There's, we're going to fill the seats here, but placement is not. Placement is not accountable to anyone or anything. No one is watching what's going on. So they're feeling, from what I understand and see, they're filling seats with, they're not committed to that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not looking to see, oh, what kids are going to go to, you know, let's fill it up with 60%. They're just taking, they're just filling up schools and families have kids at schools all over the district. And like, oh, I really wish all my kids went to the same school. Well, who is advocating for those for that, that someone at placement should be. Someone should yeah. be assigned to that job. And I don't think right now anyone is connecting or watching over what's going. So if we had a way that placement actually worked with families and with geographic boundaries and said, let's look to get, let's share the advantages of a neighborhood school. Let's, let's educate our parents and let them know and be certain that this is their neighborhood school. I just think that there's such a disconnect between parents enrolling their kids in schools and then they're getting their assignment. There's no 
for so many families, there's not a connection. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that was suggested, I forget who it was that suggested it, but they said, why don't we have registration be at the neighborhood school so that the parent gets in there and sees the school, meets the principal. They may be going in to apply for one of the uh, uh, you know, citywide draw schools, but at least they set, set foot in their neighborhood school, get a chance to talk with the parent and that, with the principal and see, meet some of the teachers, and this is a good opportunity to uh, create some uh, sense of uh, responsibility in the, in the staff that Gee, we, we have to sell ourselves to this parent in the school. and start, you know, giving them some reason to be here. And if they go somewhere else, fine. But at least we've got a good chance of saying this is what we're, we want to do with our kids. I thought that was a great, you know, because a lot of people never set foot in in their neighborhood schools. They it's a tough thing to do logistically without expanding the group quite a lot. Because what days are you going to do it? Are you going to do this school on a Monday and this school on a Wednesday and the yeah. next one the Tuesday after that? That's the only day to go to those schools? You mean you don't for, have the, you you mean don't for have site the, visits or having placement come to Having placement at the school. Oh, well, it, that's not a big problem. I really don't think it's a big problem because the open enrollment period is really quite long. The, the time between when the brochures are available and applications could begin to be taken and when the lottery occurs, there's a very long window. Mm -hmm. I think the real, uh, I think the more I think about this, the more I think the crux of the matter is pre-K. Right, families, explain what they do, what the, yeah, what the in legal was families, just telling us. Yeah, we, uh, families can enroll their child in whatever UPK program they like. And then they get attached to the school. If, it's in, if their pre-K they choose is in a school and they didn't have to fit into neighborhood boundaries, they didn't have to fit into zone boundaries, they can go anywhere for, for UPK and the state does not allow us to put any restrictions on that. So families who choose one of our schools fall in love with it at UPK at, at pre-K and they want to stay. Sometimes. They, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, okay. Yeah. Let's let's assume for a moment that that's a universal statement, okay? They they want to stay. It doesn't matter whether they live in the neighborhood or not. They want to stay. Now, then you've got the other half of the UPK population that goes to an agency pre-K. They have no school from what, uh, to which they can lay claim that um, except, except their neighborhood school, the UPK that their child is attending may not be anywhere near their home, just like the UPKs that when they're choosing homes in our schools, they may be closer to their work, but they don't have a connection to the school and they're going from pre-K to kindergarten. They have no necess don't necessarily have any relationship with any of our schools prior to that. Right, and so I think that's an easy fix. We just let parents know that you may enroll in a UPK, but you, when it comes to kindergarten, this is our policy. Right, well, that's, and that's what the current policy actually says. But what happens is, you know, when a lot of times the family says, okay, well, I went to Baden Street for pre-K and I want to go to, I don't know, uh, and maybe, I, maybe they live in the catchment area of, um, thinking of a, a very popular, 40, 42 is one of the hot, most 39. High, okay, 39, one of the most highly chosen schools, um, not necessarily by the neighborhood, but highly chosen. Um, Large, in large part because of where the jobs are. School 42 is up near Kodak. So, but then, and then placement has to say, oh, I'm sorry, that's all full because they, we have a, a pre-K and all the pre-K families wanted to stay there. We don't get first choice just because we in pre-K there. We still got to go through the registering and, and the 
they still I just did that my son graduated from pre-k yesterday so it's not like I just automatically get to put him at 44 because he went to 44 mm -hmm. I still had to go and sign him up and fill up figure out which school I wanted so, so it sounds that's like they're following the policies well, yeah that's not yeah that, that wasn't a part of the process though but either way why not just go to like ABC has start towards the end of the year and start like colleges come to high schools go to them and start letting them know like these are the schools and these are open houses for the school so that parents can get a chance to go to their schools I mean how about just sister and brother with everybody so they have the placement has the staff to be able to make the you know do a circuit Okay, well let's let's keep circling back because we did start out talking about this letter. I don't think we're quite done with this. Can we keep discussing it? We had some pros and cons, mostly cons. Um, it's also I, I think it'd be also interesting to talk about some aspects of it rather than like whole hog all of these things of the proposal. Maybe this could be something that we're that parts of it that we like. You know, so let's you know, talk about it that way. Well, I think um, if it's true that a lot of families are missing the lottery, would it be possible to make the lottery later? Well, we've, all, we've frequently altered the deadline, largely based on what the, the brochure got printed late or mailed late so there's always there's often been I think that would cause more concern delay yeah, and, and every delay. time we delay it earlier. it causes or not earlier would be better yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of that we're not doing good job marketing right so we really need to look at how we're recruiting and marketing I don't know what we really you know we need to look at that um, <laughs> we don't do anything is, to market it so this is something that uh, another parent suggested to me the other day. Um, you know, I said, I wonder, I don't know if it's possible to get, to find all the four-year-olds and mail them something. And he said, you should, they should just mail it to every address in the city. Like, we can't necessarily know where everybody's living, yeah, but they should just do that time. and do it in time. So this was a parent of 23 who told me that he, uh, he moved to the neighborhood for the school and then what, uh, a couple of years later, he woke up in a cold sweat and realized, huh, I probably should start thinking about right. registering for next year. And he like, just made the deadline for the lottery. I just want to say, though, that that's, that's a very big expense, though. I mean, having run political campaigns, mailings are expensive. <laughs> yeah. And to just say, well, we should mail to everybody in the city. Yeah, I, mean, I know, but. That's a lot, that's <laughs> a lot of posts. But you know, <laughs> think about this, that, well, I might not want to work for the rental properties. You remember when uh, the city uh, attached a breakdown of taxes, uh, how much of the property taxes went to the city and how much went to the school district? Um, an insert in yeah. something. Water bill, or the, the water bill would probably not be a great answer, but um, of the electric bill, uh, you know, getting getting an insert put into a, a bill that practically everybody pays. So some creative ways to get it out there. But I think that one thing we had talked about was allowing people to know what their homeschool was. So are we saying that's not possible to get a, like a postcard to neighborhoods to say this is your homeschool? Well, you know what, a postcard that said um, or, or, or an insert into their electric bill that said, go to this website, type your address in. Because every one of those addresses right. there does need is cross-footed with something. But it, we, it would be better if we could select it down to families. Who, I think the city has that information, right? Cities, the city knows which families have kids. No? Wait a minute. They don't, Actually, have, a, they don't have a better database than we do. Well. It, yeah, because Jane looked at, um, there's an email that she sent. But another thing is, again, if we're, if we're moving towards this neighborhood and building state, state, building principals could start to take responsibility to, you know, circle around the neighborhood, and the, yeah, campus in the neighborhood, and then that would change the responsibility of, you know, how, how to get word out about this is your neighborhood school. Oh look, this is the street, this street mm -hmm. goes to our neighborhood school. So if we can spread out that responsibility, too much is in placement. We don't have enough people in placement to take care of this. 
So if we spread it out to schools. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the principal should be part of it. Yeah, this, this email data, it's uploaded. It's from Jean. She said the database from the mayor's office does not have identifier for whether a family has school-aged children or not. All they have is whether a family has children. So the mayor's office does have that information. Age school, yeah, school-aged children. Well, and our folks get access to the census data about a year after the census is um, We track um, uh, live births through the county and, you know, the, the birth certificate filings, and we even have addresses as of the time of the birth. Um, unfortunately, in the neighborhoods we need to reach, they may have moved seven times by the time right. a child reaches pre-K, but but it doesn't mean we can't Somewhere in the database, though, we must know that they've moved from one area to the right. other in, in the county, city, school district da database, we have to know. But it, it does seem, I mean, Paul's point that, I mean, in all the data stuff that we were given, it's clear that half or less than half of the people are participating in the library. Well, so no, who does it benefit? No, 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 it's not no we it not is remember, yeah, remember Dan. Yeah. Because those, that half that's not participating include all the people who got immediate placement because they are already going to their neighborhood schools. The, the people who live within half a mile. Immediate placement does not, doesn't count in the lottery. Because they're already assigned. The immediate placement is oh, a, they just a take direct assignment. Right. Yeah. So, so do we have, so then what are the real numbers of that we that's, don't know. That's well, I think question. I thought today is just a semantic difference that might make a difference. If you talk about school selection process, there's a piece where you get selected out at the beginning because this is your neighborhood school or a sibling. Then there's a lottery as part of that selection process. Because mm -hmm. when I've been going through all this stuff in the lottery, that got confusing. So what's the base for the lottery? That's a lot smaller number than the total number of <coughs> for that school. Because all the data stuff I looked at, it's, it, it was said several times that, you know, 50% or less of the folks pre-K and all other grades are participating. So you're just saying that has not included the, the immediate placement. I'd like to know the real number. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. In fact, I wonder how, how we understand whether the lottery is working or not. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, the, and the fact that... Um, that there isn't, uh, we haven't been able to identify that whatever computer code tells us they were immediately placed versus okay. uh, administratively placed after the fact. We, that we ought to be able to figure that Before out. Before or after the lottery. And, and surely someone actually okay. Well, that's an easy question, right? Yeah. Surely there's a switch in the database. Surely. So or the date, the date of the placement. Or the date of the date. placement. Ah, yeah, that's right. Right, was it before or was it after the lottery did occurred? Yeah. Okay. You're but right. it's clear for whatever that percentage is, is not participating, whether it's 25% or 35% or 40% who are not participating, we need to do a better job. Mm -hmm. We need to do something different, mm -hmm. whether it's postcards or principles or creative inserts or connecting with UPK, <coughs> which should be easy enough at this point. We have clearly need to do that. Right. So another, just, just, just another idea, but maybe one other thing we could do would be when the lottery happens, leave that sort of 10% unfilled at each school for mm -hmm. the people who are late. Right. What's the percentage of schools that have a pre-K or UPK program at the school? Is that 80%, 50%? How many of our schools have a UPK? Mm -hmm. It's about 50%. Okay. And it, it's only about 50%. I, I also think that, again, this is looking at schools individually. Like, for school 15 is where I teach. It's a citywide school. There should be no problem there for kids to carry over from pre-K to kindergarten if it's a citywide school. And I think that parents just need to be notified of that when they start. But if you're at a neighborhood school and you're in a UPK, I just think our policy has to be very clear because 
Well, so like right now the policy says you can't carry over. Your it says that you body, can't, right? but Dr. Vargas a few years ago promised parents at School 52 that they could. So right. that information is, is yeah. still out there. But that was kind of elite. Right. I mean, he sort of he that was right. like, well, but that's out there. there. Yeah. And so, so that's really yeah. hard for pre-K teachers to tell parents to say, well, we don't really know what the policy is. I mean, we just have to have a policy. So clarify the policy. Just clarify it yeah. and just let parents know. They, If they know, going to a UPK, okay, my kids can go here for UPK. Yeah. It's not the end of the world it's, if they have to go to a kindergarten in their neighborhood. If how, they soon the information. You know, how soon did you know of that that was the rule that you had to apply for kindergarten when your children went to pre-K? Because you said you had they to. Told, they just told us, like, um, Probably like the last couple of weeks when school is winding down, it was like you guys got to start registering for kindergarten. I'm but sorry, too late. it was a salute. It was a suggestion, like you know, are you gonna send them here or you know? But that's it wasn't way after the lottery. That, yeah, it wasn't that, a recommendation that, or anything like that. It was just so like. It needs to be and and what school the was this school? Oh, 44. They suggested, like, yeah, he can come. There was a lot of confusion there yeah, because yeah, that, they, that comes with a whole bunch of baggage all by itself, wasn't it? But the, I think I wasn't even sure they were in the open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you said applies to not just UPK, like everything. Like mm -hmm. people ago. need to know how the right. right. process right. works, right. and it doesn't say it. Anymore. And it should be consistent. We don't know, right? Like we but, don't know. You know what? Right now, any parent yeah. who isn't who, who looks at our policy and says. You guys aren't following your policy. You could sue us and make us get us a job next week in the school in their in their neighborhood. It's, if someone moved next door to me today and they were told, "Sorry, school 23 is all full up for kindergarten next year," that parent could look at our policy and say, "Oh no, 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 no! You're not following the policy," and they could actually hire a lawyer and sue us to get their child in. Because the policy is the law. And we're <laughs> at <laughs> So we're, who are we accountable to? To you? To who? Well, no. this is what's so frustrating. Well, no, see, that particular piece about the pre-K, that is mandated from the state. Right. But not pre-K, right, 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 right. They couldn't get, they couldn't we demand would, to get into pre-K. I mean, I but personally they could demand to get would, into kindergarten. I would personally rather have a, a rule that so, didn't say parents could enroll anywhere in the city and that was all this okay. transportation stuff. I'd rather there be some kind of sure. limits and shaping but, about where pre-K kids can go. But the state says you but, must. But, so that's one piece of the right. law that we have we no choice about. All we can do is work around. Yeah. Can I actually think it might be possible? possible to get that changed because you could say to the legislature we want to make pre-k part of regular school like it, it should be part of the same yeah. rules well, I agree we could and lobby. We could definitely you'll save money on time. I mean yes. you know that could take you know how long it takes right. to mm -hmm. you know, we could we work could, on that and we can put it on the agenda we can, for this right. uh, we can uh, build it into our legislative like, agenda locally, but it's right not right going to happen soon and so Right, and so until it does happen, we have to. But the the problem with pre K though is again, they only have fifty percent of the school. So my son ended up at forty four school, but my other children went to three school, and three school doesn't have pre K. So I, I was telling her last week, I didn't have the option right. to send him with the, his siblings because it wasn't offered at their right. school. So. You see what and I'm oh, saying? Oh, by the so, way, there's no good reason there shouldn't be UPK at school three. I think one of our strongest suggestions should be expand that we make sure that every elementary school has at least <coughs> one UPK. Yeah. You know, because, because it, it, it's an um, not only is it an equity issue, but it the schools that have pre-K mm -hmm. have an advantage. Yeah. They can they draw families to them. Yeah, the parents who have the least ability to move around, mm -hmm. you know, should have, be able to go to the closest right. school and put their child there. But, but again, coming school. back to mm -hmm. Paul's suggestions, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still curious about the idea of some two, two things. Lotteries held for five citywide schools before the home assignments. Mm -hmm and then going to neighborhood schools. So that feels too black and white, like they're, we're taking a, a way choice. What if there were kind of an intermediary place? Like if we had still lotteries for the five citywide schools first, and then we had some combo of neighborhood schools and 
percentage of kids, you know, coming back and all this marketing for the neighborhood schools. So it was a little bit more of a, a combo thing. I mean, I this this idea of the citywide first is kind of interesting to me. That's what, what well, we have now. It, 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 That's it, it, right, and it, but it happens before. Well, it happens to be Simul on the very same day. It's simultaneous. But in yeah. terms of how the choices are made, it happens it, first. Dan's absolutely right. They they happen on the same day, but I mean everybody turns it in yeah, the same the, day. The cutoff date is the same. The, when the program is run, it takes all of the citywide choices and processes them first. And you only get one. And the and you can only choose one. And then um, and then those who did not get their citywide draw choice, that, and that's why, by the way, citywide draw choice is first. Is that that lottery actually happens first? And that those who did not get then um, are first in line for their, their number so one when you sign up, zone wide choice. You, you, like, let's say you're interested in a citywide. So you pick a citywide and then you pick another choice mm -hmm. in case you don't get that. Mm -hmm. right. you, and what's that like as a parent to fill that out? What's that? I, I, I mean, well, that's crap. Yeah, I mean, I say more about that. Do you want to go ahead? Well, okay. It's crap. It's, it's, it's just like when you play a dollar in a dream. If you don't win, how do you feel when you don't win? <laughs> it's, it's crap. It's like, and then if you go to the schools, the little citywide schools that are so everything, it seems to me like it's color coded because there's not a lot of brown faces in those little lottery drawn at draw schools, and it seems like they just pull all of the Hispanics and the white people out of the the troubled schools, and it'd be maybe one or two or five in, the, in a total of like 40 kids that's black kids or African-American kids. So it doesn't seem fair. In the city-wise. In the city-wise. In the schools that's supposed to be so much better than every other school. So to me, I don't I don't understand the lottery. I don't see it on TV when they pull the names. All I know is, poof, the names have been pulled, the kids are in that school. So. Who implemented this lottery? Because I don't, I'm trying to understand this because my kids grad, got out of school by 2005. 2008, so I don't know what the lottery Yeah, I didn't yeah. go through the lottery either, either with my kids, it so it was kind of new to me. Oh, okay. Because I went to number one, too. Well, I know what you mean. So more comments about what it's like as a parent but to deal with I that. I think there's, there's two problems that a lot of, or two big questions that a lot of parents have, which is, one of them is, what if my first choice is a non-citywide school, but I want my second choice to be a citywide school. So there's, you can't express that under oh, the current okay. system. Yeah, right. okay. and and the other well, thing is the, the the other question is, what if my first choice is a citywide school and my second choice is another citywide school? Oh. You can't do that yeah, either. Now I know what you're going to say. You're going right, to say you're you, not going to get that second you, choice. Right. But you I think I actually will. think that. Uh, but you know. People don't understand that, and they're frustrated because well, we they gotta, can't. We've got to do a video or something that shows why that works the way it works. Because so you see it once, and you know why it doesn't work. You, you, you know, if you have it, if it's carefully explained, and it's not complicated. But if, if it is not complicated. Yeah, but what if each school, citywide school, does a lottery, you, and then the next school has a, another lottery? And all the names go. You know what I mean? Like, why can't it be done that you way? Why can't you get say one that? number in the lottery? That? So yeah. you get I mean, a number. You get one number. What happens is the child's name is assigned the number. Right. You're only, you can only get in one. You know. You're so one, your you're, one number. You're in the number if you have a low number, lower being better, you're going to get your choice, no matter what yeah. that choice is. So. so. I was going to say. With the children, do you think if the kids are taught more at home, like if the parents teach the kids a little bit more, do they get the, the lottery on their merit of how much they know or whatever? No, oh, it's also. just that they get picked. To, it, it, okay, I had thought I had thought that it was because it, of what they know. Or is it random based on who registers their kids into that citywide thing, or does everybody get shot? It's completely random. Okay. If you fill out one of these and you're assigned when the lottery comes a number. And the higher your number, well, the lower your number, actually, the better your chance of getting in places. So, and it has none, nothing else affects it at that point. So, I, w I still want to hear more ideas about like people are not feeling good about this. <laughs> so, I think, I from my experience, and the only school that I can think of that, about what you're saying, because my kids do go to 58, which is a citywide school, and my my son is one of five white kids in his whole 
great. So I'm wondering if you're thinking about a charter school, I'm thinking of like Genesee Community Charter School, where they have the lottery that is like, you know what I mean? Like they're well, really, well I know, but, it, but I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of which one of these schools that is in fact happening because from what I understand, it is just a random, you know what I mean? They can't pick who is going to the schools. But I think what's creating that uncertainty is that there are so many choices that parents and who can just go sign up at a charter school, they're like, well, I just know I can go there because I'm just going to go sign up at that charter school. I can go to this private school. So it's overloaded. Like, choice, it's almost an overload, and there's so much uncertainty there. There's no state building in schools. Like, as you have young children, there's no way to say, well, I know my kids are going to this school, so right. I can start to build stake and have relationships at this school. So so what would be better? But, what would be a well, better? Wait, finish your thought and then... And then but there, one, i got to correct you. Charter schools have lotteries, too. There's no certainty in charter yeah. schools. They are drawn, driven by law. By law. Right. But some of them don't have, they're not full. You know what I mean? Well, so I wouldn't want to go to a charter school that was not full. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, finish I, your, wait, hang on. Finish your suggestion, then Ebony had something to say. So, I just think that, I mean, my suggestion would be if, in fact, you're saying it's just, you just choose one citywide because it's not possible to choose two citywides, which I hear parents saying they like a lot of the different programs, magnet programs at the different citywide schools because of the different programming they offer, then there should be a default and you just have certainty knowing, okay, well then this is the school I can start to build stake in. This, you know, this school is my, the default school. If I don't get into the citywide school, then I know my neighborhood school is three. So I can start to form relationships there. I can start to make changes if I don't like them. And then if there is a process, maybe there is a process where you really don't want to go to that school because it is not you do not like what is happening there, you do not, then maybe there is a process that a parent goes through and says, I'm gonna fill out these papers and I want my child transferred to a school either within the zone or the, you know, yeah. the neighborhood cluster or whatever, if, if that's something that comes up, then maybe that is, a, by law, we have to be able to offer that to parents. It seems like the default cluster could be the cluster of schools that you live in. How about you, what are right, your so suggestions? I mean, well, Wait, I want to answer that one that you're saying. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is if you go to the schools that are not citywide, right. the percentage of white kids to black kids are slim to none. Like, it's not diverse in the schools. Right. So it's it's like less different, yeah. way less than. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if you go to those citywide schools, they're, ma they're, they're majority, like, they're more diverse there because there's more of everybody, right. which is what I'm saying. That and that's what I'm talking. About. I'm not speaking to exact the exact numbers right. at those citywide schools, but I'm saying that's where more right. of the white people in Puerto Ricans are right. than in our regular schools. Right. And um, as far as like a suggestion, um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's <laughs> this a lot. camera is like right here. <laughs> But I mean, I, I was, uh, so I mean, to me, like, I think that, um, see, I don't even know how the lottery works. And I've been in the city school district now for my daughter's in ninth grade. And she's been here since kindergarten. And I don't know how the lottery works at all. And I'm an active parent in the city school district. So, that I mean, should, obviously. Like that should be a clear, easy fix. Really are you looking, are you make a video and put something out. Are you in one of the, the RPPP UPKs or? You said you just filled out a lottery for your kindergarten. Did book. you do this? Form? No. Like when you did signed up? Or, or nope. that? No. All I did was. Um, you have a, you have a pre-K go kindergarten age child. Yes, he's and he just graduated from pre-K. He's gonna go to kindergarten. And they didn't have you fill out one of those forms. I all I did was go there and say that my other kids go to three school, and they said, all right, we'll put them in there. And that was it. There was nothing about a lottery. There was well, nothing you about. Need the lottery then. Yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, I still would like for him to go to a better school oh, if he no, could, right, right, right. but I wasn't offered do, that. Do you live in the, the school? I live around the corner from 10 school. I, three oh, school so is... three is not your No, it's not school. my... 44 is my neighborhood yeah. school, and uh, 44, oh, 16, and uh, 10. Oh, it's after the lottery. Those are my neighborhood schools. But I'm saying, like, I still wasn't aware of that right. process, period. So, and that's something that right. should be told to, especially yeah. pre-K yeah. parents, and me, I'm a parent already. Like I got kids in the school already. Yeah. But people who got new new kids, they don't know nothing well, about the six, the schools and all that if stuff. You have, you have a ninth grader, and the school choice system has been around since before your ninth grader was a kindergartner. So you should have. You should. I have filled out this paper for for her for I believe six going into seventh, mm -hmm. and yep. um, 
I believe. So no, actually, she actually I got fed up with the city school district and yeah. sent her to a charter and then came back. Okay. But I filled out this paperwork. But I'm saying like I never got like. Like it didn't give me a follow up letter or anything saying like, well, your child wasn't selected for the lottery or nothing. It just was okay. Well, she going there, so I don't, I didn't know the process of it. I didn't know where I should go to watch for it, the numbers to come up or so anything that's, like that's that. That's because it was after the lottery. She was no, no, that was for. For seventh grade. For seventh Right, oh, my, my, okay. my preschooler was after the lottery. I'm right. saying like in the years, right. I have never gotten anything about the lottery. Like I don't right. even know the system of it. And, then, and I think that's the point I want to underscore is at this stage, as many years as just the lottery's been around, it ought to be universally unknown in our community. Everybody, every parent ought to know that we have a lot of this system. Right, I, I can recall. The only time we ever did advertising was in the first two years of this. And so it's understandable that people don't know. You can't assume after only two years that. I can recall taking my daughter, but if the ninth grader, to an interview or something when 33 school first got like built up and redone in a Spanish program. Mm -hmm. I can recall taking her to an interview for that. And there was no follow up for that. She just didn't go to that yeah, school. Yeah. Like they didn't say, well, yeah, she she's a good, uh, you know, compatible or not. They just got a letter saying she's going to sell. But it also sounds like there needs to be clarification of the process after the lottery dates are gone. There's this big black box, like, mm -hmm. oh, displacement just put me somewhere. There needs to be some clarity about how those choices are being made, right? Because they just said we're going to put you here. And they, they kind of should day. just go to their preschools, like during that lottery, yeah. you know, they should yeah. just go hands on to the preschools and say, hey, you know what, right. from January to March, you this is when you this. get a chance to go yeah. to, and then explain to the, the parents what the schools are, why are they, you know what I'm saying, like, like literally even give this to them in yeah. their hand, like, this is what it is. Yeah. This is why this school is great, or this is what is good about this school. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't do that. You have to figure that out on your own. They just say go register your child. They don't say it's a time matter. They just say register them if you that, want to get them into school. That's who knows where the four four year olds live. It's the pre Ks. It's not the city. It's, yes, it's right. the pre Ks. Mm -hmm. right. And those are starting up. So right. and teachers do not know the process. That's part of the problem. They that's don't the know. Problem. They're either they don't. They're not. They don't kids in the city school, so they don't know the process. Sixth grade teachers, same thing. They don't know the process, nope. so they don't have. They don't know, and I'm not blaming them. It's not their fault, but we don't have a policy to say, "Hey, teachers, this should go home in their mailbox. This right. should go home in their take home or folder. This needs to go home this, faster." Every pre-K so. has a tech support, has a, a or a family teacher. It's a it's a position mm -hmm. that connects with parents, right? Don't you have like a, a liaison yeah, or, or they something? The name of it. It's a family it teacher, so. but they should be doing that. Like every pre-K family should be having that. But that it might need to just be done them. right at open house. Like when they first yeah. do the, the in come the fall, in. Yeah. yeah, when you first come in and meet just your child's mm -hmm. teacher, you might need to just start giving parents information like that yes. soon. Like yes. this is, you need to look into the these schools. and is huge <laughs> how we communicate that down. I want to look at one last thing. I'm looking at, the we're out of time already here. Number one on in Paul's letter, it says, Lottery will be done in a way that neighborhood schools across the city are fairly represented at age school. That seems, are we, what are we doing? Are we not doing that right we now? Do not. That seems like a really important suggestion there. It looked on the chart like great. they were spread across pretty much the whole school numbers. Really? Well, that's, oh, yeah, when you go look at it, it's a so small, that's a small question, That's a dated question we can ask, right? We've, yeah, but we've, what is it we've got the data. It, yeah, if, you, it, if, if we, we look at one of those charts with the magnifying glass. Right. Yeah, I think so that's I'd like an expert to transfer. Yeah. Right. There's not a single cell that has a zero in it. I, um, yeah, I don't think there's a huge disparity. But I'd like to get it confirmed by well, the expert. Well, it's on the chart. I mean. but actually, one of my problems is I'm not sure I'm getting all the content. I mean, it's there, but I'm having a little bit of a hard mm -hmm. time translating and interpreting some of the right. stuff. So I'd like to. Right. I'm, I'm proposing that next week we bring it could be Adele, it could be Jing, it could be somebody from data who can come and uh, go through our questions. So we collected a few today, uh, not too many, but a few today, data questions. We have some on the table, and I want everybody to go home and make sure you add questions to the data chart and 
We'll see if we can get somebody to come and answer questions. Questions next time. That's a really concrete thing. Is there anyone okay. who could come? Or is there really like that? Um, well, I want somebody for placement who knows numbers, not just someone who. I think Kathy would have a good sense of that. Who would? Kathy Vargas. I think that's her name. Kathy Vargas? Vargas. H. I gotta look up. Vargas? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe get several people, you know, a placement person and a data person. So we can invite that. Anything else we could do in the next meeting to keep moving forward? That you would like to well, propose? The, the disaggregation of the that um, how many people are too late for the letter? Placed by selection versus placed by immediate placement. And that's what manual means, right? Ma manual means manual would be desert. they did it, but uh, because they're a net man because they're a neighborhood child before lottery, it could mean they placed it after the lottery had taken place and the parents missed. The okay, so can we, can we find out if the um, if the UPK can we can we require that parents sign up at their closest UPK so that not not sign them up for that one but that's where they go and do the sign up process so they get a chance to see hopefully you know 50 50 chance they see the, the, their neighborhood's tool.